the purpose of this video is to quickly get you up and running with Mastercam so that you can um, get ready to machine a part out of aluminum plate. To get started, I just want to talk about the settings. Um, under configuration here, it's important that you go to converters and select um, edge curves under converters. Basically, when importing a part designed in an another 3D um, CAD program, possibly like Inventor or SolidWorks, if you don't have that selected, you won't be able to um, select the edges on the part you import because it won't import the edges. It will only import the solid. The other thing that I like to do, it's not necessary, but um, it helps me a lot, is under um, screen and grid settings, if I make the grid visible, we'll talk about the grid in just a moment, and then just hit OK and um, accept. This is the grid that I just um, imported and it basically shows you um, it was set here for a 2 by 2 inch by 2 inch grid um, and it basically shows you the current construction plane. The other thing um, that is very useful if you hit F9 it shows the coordinate axes and if I get an isometric view you can see that we have the x-axis here the y-axis here and then the z-axis here. The part that we're going to um, get ready to machine is a bearing retainer and so I'm just going to go file open and I, it was designed in Autodesk Inventor so I have that um, selected and I'll just select the bearing retainer and go OK. And it gives me a view of the XY plane but if I get an isometric view hit F9 again to show the coordinate um, axes, you can see that the part isn't oriented correctly. And to rotate the part, um, or to machine the part, it needs to be lying in the XY plane because um, that is the plane that we're machining in or the tool plane. And so we need to rotate the part or orient it so that it's lying down in the XY plane. And you, if you go to um, X form and rotate and just select the piece by making a rectangle clicking and then hitting enter and typing in rotate and selecting move here instead of copy you can see that we're not getting the rotation that we want because it's rotating about the z-axis or more specifically it's rotating about a vector that is perpendicular to the construction plane and so what we need to do before we rotate is we need to change the construction plane and a quick way to do that is um, we want to be rotating about the x-axis here so if I go to the front construction plane or I'm sorry not the front but the right construction plane I get a plane like this and so that's the current active construction plane and so when we do rotate it will rotate about the x-axis or again a vector normal to this plane and so now selecting this part hitting enter going X form rotate. I can then just click 90 degrees here and hit OK. And so now that rotates the part. I'm going to go right back to the um, top um, construction plane. And notice that our work coordinate system is also set to top by default. The next thing I want to um, look at is to see if the part is actually lying in the, the plane and you can see that the part, half of the part is above the XY plane, half of it's below. We need to translate the part down so that it is, so that the top of the part is in, lies within the XY plane. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One, you could just do a translate. Another quick way is just go move to origin. Find this center point here that's at the top of um, the part and click and it shifts the part down. To confirm, I can do a front view. You can see that the part is now, the top of the part is lying within the XY plane. Going back to the isometric view, the next thing that we want to be able to do is set up the machine and the stock and then get ready to make our tool paths. And so I'm going to go to machine type and select a mill. Um, the mill that we have in the the shop here is a Tormach mill and so we're just going to select this one. It, it, you would not have that one available to you if you haven't um, set up the system, if someone hasn't set it up for you. But you could go to manage list and find um, a suitable mill. 
Um, notice also, besides just the Tor mock mill, there is a standard th um, three-axis vertical milling center, and so you could select that one as well. But I'm going to just select the Tor mock here. And what that does is it gives me um, the machine group here. And if I expand that, I can set up the stock by clicking on Stock Setup. If you already have a piece of material that you know you're going to use, you can um, just put the stock in there, maybe a 4 inch by 4 inch by 8 inch thick um, piece of material or stock. And I can display that and hit OK. It will, it will show the stock there. Another really quick way to do that is instead of just typing in the numbers, you can go to create a bounding box. And it will create a bounding box um, bounding the geometries that you have. And then you can expand it by any amount. So I'll expand it by an inch in each direction in the X and the Y. And that gives us these stock dimensions here. I know they're kind of crazy, and that's just based upon the dimension of the original part. Um, and then I can hit OK. And so that gives me the stock. I can look and get a top view here, and you can see that I've centered the part on the um, XY axis. And going back to the isometric view, we're going to now start doing some contours and um, to cut out the part. And so to do that, I'm going to go to Toolpath and Contour. The first thing that I'm going to do is um, cut out these holes here and the big hole in the middle. The, the smaller holes here um, are basically holes for rivets, and then the larger hole is a, a hole for clearance of the inner race of the bearing that this will be retaining. And a quick way to do that um, is to just go um, to the construction plane and hit area. And then I can just select these different circles here and hit the check mark. Now, um, to, to um, cut this out, as soon as I hit the check mark, it brought up this parameter window. And now we're going to select the different parameters for cutting out this part, or for more specifically, these four chains. Um, the first thing that we need to do is um, select a tool. And I'm going to go select library tool, and it defaults to this big long list of tools. We don't have these tools in the shop, um, all of these tools, and so we've made our own library. And the library we have is just the TRC tooling library, so you can find that. And then the tool that we're going to use, we're going to just, for this first machining, um, for, for machining your first part here, I recommend just using a really small bit and take your time. Um, and so we're going to use a really small 1 8 inch flat end mill. And it's labeled tool number 2 in our shop. And so we're going to hit OK there. And then the next thing that I just want to take a peek at is the cut parameters. Cut parameters, we're going to look at this in more detail when we cut the outside of the part. But notice by default, the compensation direction of the bit is on the left. Meaning if you're going in this, if the if the bit is moving in this direction, the bit is on the left side of that arrow, or that the direction that it's following. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the depth of cuts. This is an eighth inch, eighth inch um, material thickness, and we're dealing with an eighth inch flat end mill. That's a very um, small diameter bit, and it's not. I don't recommend that you do a full depth contour, basically cutting the full eighth inch deep in a single pass. And so I recommend a, a good rule of thumb is to just go half of um, the diameter or uh, depth equal to the radius of the bit, or a little bit over. I'm just going to go 0 0.07. Notice an eighth of an inch in decimal is 0.125. Half of that, which is the radius, would be 0 0.065. This is just over that amount. And I want to talk about why I didn't do 0 0.065, why I'm doing something a little bit larger. The lead in, lead out talks about um, if you are really concerned about the edges um, of, of the parts that you're contouring, what occurs if you don't have a lead in and lead out is the bit basically dives um, right at the edge and then cuts the part out. And so the en entry and exit points, there's often a tiny little ridge. For these little you know, rivet holes and clearance holes, I really don't need a lead in and lead out. And I'll talk more about how that works later. Um, I do want a little breakthrough. I want to cut a little bit deeper than the, than the stock material. 
so that stock material is an eighth. I want to cut about ten thousandths of an inch deeper just to make sure that I get through the material. We're not going to do any multiple passes. Multiple passes have to do with if you want to go wider and wider um, or maybe you want to do a finish pass. For example, if you're cutting like a bearing hole and, and you want it to um, be really clean, you could cut a little bit smaller and then clean it up with a very, take a little bit of material off in a finish pass. But we're not going to do that in this lesson. Um, we're not going to worry about tabs here. And we're just going to cut the parts out. And the final thing that we're going to look at is the linking parameters. What I recommend you do in the, this first part is just always use absolute here in the different positions. Here we have the retract height. Okay. Here is the feed plane, which is 200 thousandths above the part. And then the top of the stock is right at zero. And so we're going to go down into the material. So we're going to go negative 0.125 or the thickness of the material. And then I'm going to just hit the check mark to hit OK. And what we can do then is um, take a look at what's going to occur. You can kind of see the little lines here, that the little lines just showing the contours that we're going to follow. Notice if I zoom in and zoom out with the um, mouse, those go away. Um, that's just a graphical anomaly there. But we can view what it's going to look like and what it's going to um, those holes are going to look like if we just um, go verify here on the selected operations. I'm going to fit it to screen. I'm going to slow it down a little bit and then just hit play. Kind of see the bits going to go in and cut out what we need. One thing you see though, it really doesn't show you the movement of the bit very well. And so to show the movement of the bit um, more clearly, we can actually do um, this back plot, which actually reads um, the code that your machine's going to read and you you may need to click display the tool. I like displaying the tool so you can kind of see the tool moving. And then there's some other settings um, that we're not going to talk about now, but you can play with them. And then I'm just going to hit play here. It kind of shows you the movement. Notice that it's doing the cut in two depths. Okay. And there's no lead in and no lead out. Notice it's it's always cutting in a counterclockwise path. And if I cut in a counterclockwise path here on these internal contours, if you're cutting on the left side of the line for the compensation, then you're cutting correctly. Some, what often happens is people get the compensation direction wrong and they're cutting the, uh, you know, if you're, if, you're on, if you're going clockwise here, then and the compensation direction was on the left, you would be cutting a much larger hole. So that's something you need to be aware of. And the back plot really helps verify that. So the next thing that we want to do is actually cut out this little part. And so I'm going to do another contour. So I'm just going to go tool pass and then contour. And instead of using the construction plane area, I'm just going to follow the edges here. And maybe we'll start right here. And you can see the little arrow that it's making. I'll zoom in. And I'm just going to continue this path around. Okay. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see, and so you have to zoom around and maybe orient the part differently. You can click fit if you need to, um, whatever you need to do to give you the correct view as you go around the edge of this piece. Now, if you happen to miss a part, like now notice this line here is the next little section of the contour, but if I miss one and click here, it'll warn me and it'll say, the subchain does not touch the branch point. Basically, it's saying that you miss, you have a jump or a gap, and so you need to make sure that you hit all of the spots in between as you go around this part. I rotate the piece often by using the middle mouse button and holding it, and we've made it all the way around. Now I can just hit OK. And it keeps many of the things um, that I did before by default. Notice um, tool two. Yes, I agree it would be a lot quicker to mill, mill this part out with a larger bit, maybe a quarter inch end mill, but um, to keep things slow and safe, I don't. there's no really real rush on doing your first part, so we'll just use this small bit. Number two, um, the depth of cut still is 0 0.07. Um, let's show what a lead in and lead out would do. I don't want to make this a tutorial about lead-in and lead-outs, but just quickly, we have an entry and an exit. 
you can see that a lead in will, will the bit as it comes in will not start right at the edge of the contour it'll start a little ways away specifically it will start 0.125 inches or 100 percent the diameter of the bit and I also have a little arc radius too so it, instead of just coming in um, tangent to the curve here um, up to the contour it comes in you have a little arc and then it comes in and then you have the same on the exit and if you ever want to change you can play with all um, different variables here but I'll just leave it to the default and then the next thing um, that we'll go to is just verify the breakthrough is 0 0.01 and then again we're not doing multiple passes but I do think tabs are in order because if you just cut this whole thing out the parts gonna go flopping around before it's all done and so I'm gonna put in some tabs we'll put um, three tabs in and I really don't think the tabs need to be a full inch wide this is a pretty small part so maybe I'll go a, a half of an inch and just to be safe we'll go a little bit thicker I, I kinda like 35 thousandths of an inch for the tab thickness this ramp angle just tells you the angle at which the um, bit goes up as it does the tab motion okay and you can change that as well there's a lot you can do with the tabs but this is not really a lesson on tabs just three tabs should hold this well then finally the linking parameters and we'll go we'll keeps all of our same settings except the depth and we'll go the depth again negative 0.125 now you may be asking why didn't I just go a depth of negative 0.135 and forget just skip the breakthrough well the reason why I like putting in the breakthrough separately and then putting in the linking parameters is that it keeps the integrity of my tab thickness if I were to just change the breakthrough to zero and say well I want to go an extra 10 thou so I go negative 0.135 then my tab thickness would not be the 35 thousandths that I chose here even though I put 35 thousandths the tab height would only be um, 25 thousandths because I'm already cutting deeper and so that's why I leave it like that so um, once I hit OK um, you can kind of see the paths I can um, select that part notice by default that one is just selected and I can verify that operation with a back plot and I can hit play you can kind of see the lead in as it goes around and I can speed it up if I need you get impatient you can change the speed and it goes back down and it goes around for the second pass and it leads out okay I also like to just quickly verify the part as well fit to screen here hit play you can see the lead in cutting around on the first pass and then cutting around on the second pass now the total depth that I cut is point negative point one three five or hundred and thirty five thousands now if I would have gone back in the parameters and remember when I talked about the depth of cuts if I would have gone point zero six two five or a sixteenth of an inch well a sixteenth of an inch um, twice of that is an eighth but I'm cutting a depth a little bit more than an eighth because I'm doing a eighth plus my ten thou breakthrough and so if I had my depth of cuts as a sixteenth of an inch or the radius of the bit it would in fact divide 0.135 inches or 135 thousandths into three equal depths and it would have done that in three paths instead of two so that's why I went a little bit larger than the 0 0.0625 inches or one sixteenth of an inch so once we have that um, we can then just post the selected operations and you can just hit the check mark and one thing it gave me a warning it says I didn't have everything selected notice um, I don't have the first contour selected so I, I do want to post all of the operations so I'm gonna hit yes okay and then it will just allow me to save that and then you can save that on the network or on your USB drive whatever and that is the code that you're going to need to um, open up on the machine.